Hi everybody, and welcome to Small Chat Radio. I'm your enthusiastic host, Alana Devereaux, and I will be here with you until the halfway mark. I have lots of interesting content for you today, and now enough chit-chat, let's jump right in. First I have with me Brooke and Hannah to talk a little bit about music and dancing, live from Gorg Community School. Hi Brooke. Hi. Hi Hannah. Hi. Now, um, I hear both of you do dancing, so yeah. what type of dancing do you do? Um, I do ballet. And I do kind of like hip-hop street dance. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about music. So let's say if you had to pick four music artists, your four favourite music artists. So Brooke, what would be your okay. four favourites? Um, I like Billie Eilish, um, Shawn Mendes, Ariana Grande and Little Mix. And Hannah? Um, I love Billie Eilish too. And I love Cardi B. And I love... Lady Gaga and uh, who was it? Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so I hear that you do a lot of dancing, mm-hmm. Hannah. So in the future, do you see yourself taking this to a professional level, or will it stay a hobby? Well, I'd love to like be a professional dancer and do competitions and everything, but like. I think it might just stay a hobby. And Brooke? Yeah, I think I'll keep it as a hobby, but I will still be doing shows and stuff. Hmm. And would you say that you enjoy dancing? Would it, sorry, would you do it on a regular basis or is it like a once a month, once a week thing? Um, well, I have classes every Saturday. Um, they start back in September, but I would dance on a regular basis. Like. Yeah, I have classes every Wednesday, but I'd still like practice and do it myself. And would you take? Would there be any like dancing idols or that you take inspiration from? Um, well, I love the group. Um, well, it was a group, uh, Ashley Banjo's group, Diversity, and they just like the music they dance to, is, like the music I love too. So. And Brooke, do you have one? Um, not really. I kind of just, I like any dancer, I think, is cool. So, if you had to pick a one, which would you prefer? Old music? Well, not old music, but kind of classics or brand new music? Um, i definitely pick, like, classics, because it's just better. <laughs> um, I like both, really. I'd listen to both and I'd dance to both. And would you prefer to dance to old music or to listen to old music? I'd rather listen to old music. Definitely dance. <laughs> and so have you lately done any pieces that you would be very proud of? Um, n- not recently, recently, but a couple of months ago I did one with my crew. It was really, really good. And um, Brooke? Um, I can't really think of any that like popped in my head, but I have done good ones with my like class, so... Brilliant. Thank you for that, Hannah and Brooke. For the topic, on the topic of music, uh, thank you for that, Hannah and Brooke. <laughs> and see you both very soon. Thank you. Yeah, bye. On the topic of music, last week I had a talk with famous drummer Mika Gleason and electronic music artist Saib Kaowen. Here's how it went. That. It's, it's a drum that So it's basically a box that makes the sound of a snare drum and a bass drum. So what's your favorite type of music? My favorite type of music would probably have to be, I don't know. If I had to put a smush a load of genres together, it'd probably be acoustic, pop, punk, rock, if that's a specific genre. I don't know. How about you? (laughs) Uh, I like uh, digital pop. Cure. Mika? I have no idea. I just listen to music and listen to it. That's it. <laughs> okay, and um, do you have a certain type of instrument that you like the most? Definitely. I love, um, I love playing my guitar. I love, I can play electric guitar, normal guitar, <laughs> acoustic, and I can play ukulele and tin whistle. Tiny bit of piano, but I'm very bad, to be honest. <laughs> I like uh, the piano, but I can't actually play it. I can play a starter for a lease, but nothing from then onwards. So, Mika, what instruments can you play? 
I can play every, pretty much every kind of drum. One instrument that I think can be played, and some people are great at it, and some people, I don't know how, but make it sound great, the bagpipes. God, some people are like, oh. I, oh, oh. they're so, I, I don't even, I don't even. I'm the, I, once I'm, I was, I used to do pipe band, like I used to play, um. You play yeah. bagpipes? No. Oh. Drums. Oh, yeah. Oh. Of course you play drums. <laughs> Oh, on the my granddad's anniversary, um, it was like the special day of the of the army, and then for when you went up, um, I was in the church at this point, and when you went up to the altar to get the bread, um, they were playing bab- bagpipes. Oh God, love you! And, oh, geez. In the church, it would have been so echoey. It was, and it was yeah. so loud. <laughs> you can watch Meek and Sive on, on the TV for the Small Chat Music Awards next Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Good luck, guys. Now we have a sneak peek at the brand new TV show based podcast hosted by my friend and co-host, Una Faye Flavin. Here's a section on character development I think you will enjoy. Hi there, I'm Una Faye, and I'm here to talk about the character development, more specifically, Bullies from Fiction. Bullies are... The first point I would like to make, bullies are always dudes, so why can't, well, girls, boys are, can be mean, but girls can also um, bully, but most of the point, well, the two main bullies in fiction that we have come to understand today are the popular Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter and Steve from Stranger Things. Difference, even though these two are bullies, they have, they have many differences. One, one Steve from Stranger Things is set the story is set in an 80s town, while the other one is set in a wizarding school. The motivation behind these two boys are very different as well. So Draco is like a lo- is lonely, so that's why, and is always is always aiming to have friends. He is also pressured by his father to do better, but he always feels like he will let him down. While Steve, on the other side, is insecure and and doesn't know how to feel about that feeling. And feel feels underachieved when people and um, people do great, greater than him. Takes and takes anger out and takes that anger out on other people. He's also scared of what's going on around his town and has no friends and as and is nervous around girls. These two bullies um, usually attack bullies. Usually, in, bullies in fiction usually usually attack the protagonist or lesser characters who are appear to be weak. So. So in Harry Potter, Draco takes out, lashes out on Hermione, who, who is the side character and best friend of Harry Potter. She is supposedly a mudblood, a, a wizard who, who, is, who was born from a muggle family. So Draco lashes out his anger on them, and for his father, wants him to be pure and be perfect. Well, he feels like he can't do that. Well, Steve, he, he lashes out on the main characters. Will and Eleven, for he feels scared and and wants to protect his hometown. The character development in these in these two characters is Steve becomes the friends of the two of the protagonists, and Draco um, joins the army, joins Lord Voldemort's army, and realizes his mistakes and turns back. These two character developments are very different, but they all turn back turn good in the end. So I think I'm done talking. So goodbye. How cool was that? You can find the first episode out on Spotify in three weeks. It's a great way to use up spare time. Now, talking of podcasts, I'm very excited to play this week's episode of Storytime with Thomas. Take it away, Thomas. Hello there. Welcome to Storytime with Thomas, where I read stories written and sent by other people. Today we're going to read The Spooky House, Part 1, by Thomas Kahn. On October 24th, 2019... People on Tower Hill were getting ready for Halloween. One particular family was buying the biggest decorations they could for the, for their house because one of their two boys, Stephen, loves Halloween. He loves Halloween so much that he would often steal sweets from other kids on trick-or-treating while trick-or-treating to get more for himself, which he would often get caught by his older brother, David. But Stephen couldn't wait another week for the spooky occasion he just wanted to eat all the treats right away. That night, 
Mom and Dad left David in charge of the house while they went over to a friend's house. Then, a piece of paper was thrown out in the front garden. It was a letter written by someone who had just entered into a spooky house. He said it was the scariest thing in the world, and after he ran out, he almost got lost. This caught Stephen's interest, and he showed the letter to David, who thought it was just some, someone trying to sound spooky by making up stories. It turns out the house was just across the street from Stephen's. It looked so cool that the little eight-year-old was just begging to check it out. And he did. It didn't take long for David to realize he was gone. He was obviously worried sick. And he had no choice but to go look for him. He then saw the spooky house and thought that Stephen must have gone inside to explore it. He then saw someone entering the house. Judging by his size and appearance, he thought it was Stephen. Meanwhile, Stephen was looking around the house thinking it was really cool, but then the lights had gone out. Luckily, Stephen had his flashlight with him. While exploring, he noticed a sign that said, if you make any sort of sound, you'll be trapped in this house forever. At that moment, David saw Stephen and started screaming at him for the fact that he might have gotten lost. Then, a hand took David by the leg and dragged him downstairs into another room. Stephen knew it was up to him to save David. He then thought of a genius plan to get David to safety. After a few minutes, it was finally time to put the plan in action. When the mysterious man left, Stephen told David he was going to do weird noises to lead him out of the place. This was a very bad idea because the sign said not to make any sound or else they'll be trapped in here forever. But because Stephen was so determined to save his big brother, that just wasn't in his mind. Unsurprisingly, the man heard the noises and came down to catch the boys. Also unsurprisingly, David was furious, but Stephen had another genius plan. He grabbed David's hand and rushed up the stairs, and the two came across a trap. Luckily, they ran pretty quickly, and the man was the one who ended up caught in the trap. He tried to get up, but somehow ended up causing the house to explode. David and Stephen both got out, not hurt at all, but then they saw a man getting out of his car and heading towards them. He dragged the brothers by the necks and shoved them in the back of his car. Who was he? Was he good? What was he going to do to them? Was he good? Was he bad? Who will save them? For now, it's up to you to make your conclusions. Until part two, coming sometime. That was a spectacular, scary story, Thomas Khan. Remember to keep on writing. Do you have a cheetah? Of course I do. But they're so boring. We could fix that, introducing Rainbow, Rainbow Cheetahs. Cheetahs. Where can I get this? You could buy them online. Cheetahs go rainbow. Terms and conditions apply. Women are non-existent and their data collects. If you avoided online, not received for 10 years, not late. Call 666-0000. And we're back. Gotta get me some of those cheetahs. Let me know on social media if you would buy some rainbow cheetahs. We might even do a vox pop on it. Here's a vox pop Ben took a few days ago about your, about your favourite sports. That we have an exclusive interview with, then we have an exclusive interview with Una Faye and Faye. Coincidence? I think not. Now, sadly, these are my last words of today. So, enjoy the interview and the rest of the programme. This is Alana Devro signing out. Have fun and talk to you next week. Most importantly, don't die. Hockey, horse riding and dancing. I don't like sports at all. I don't really play much sports or what. Well, I do play the sports. I enjoy horse riding. Well... I'm not a very sporty person, but I love to watch rugby and hurling. Uh, I don't really enjoy many sports. I enjoy tennis uh, more than others, but I don't like sports. Um, I like to. I like enjoy. I enjoy watching football and a bit of rugby sometimes as well. I actually don't don't like uh, many sports. I like dancing. Maybe that's a sport, is it? Hello and welcome. I'm Alana Debro and I'm here with Una Faye and Faye. Today we will be discussing GAA. Mm. So, Una Faye, what is your personal opinion on GAA? GAA is fine, but kids need to have a lot more variety in their sports. Very interesting. Faye, what do you think of it? 
My opinion on GAA is, is that it is the most boring and worst sport in the world. I couldn't agree more. Certain aspects can be fun, but overall, it's very boring. What are some other sports people can try out, Faye? Well, there's many, more, many other sports you can try, such as hockey, horse riding, soccer, tennis, and many, many more. Great. And then, Faye, anything to add? Well, you can play other sports that don't involve balls, um, like uh, martial arts sports, or maybe you could try out swimming. And Unife, do you enjoy any other sports than GAA? I do enjoy basketball. Um, I'm fairly good at it, and I do enjoy playing. Yes, basketball is great fun. And Faye, what sports do you play? I really enjoy playing hockey, hor uh, horse riding, and dancing. Perfect. Unife, imagine I'm new on a basketball team. Give me the basics. Well, f first off, there's two teams, um, and they're both on separate sides. Um, one, one team gets the ball and has to dribble it from one side of the court to the other and get it into the basket. Um, there's defense, which has to get the ball, and offense, who gets the ball into the basket. And would you play offense or defense? I play defense to get the ball off the team. So, Faye, tell me a bit about horse riding. Horse riding is an international sport. Many people think horse riding is very easy, but trust me, it's not. Thank you both for coming. That's Alan Debro, Faye Furlong McGarry, and Una Faye Flavin signing out. Adios, amigos. Thanks for passing the mic to me, Alana. Hi, I'm Una Faye, and I'll be the host for the rest of the program. Osive and Mika talked earlier this week about their favorite video games, so and why they like them. So let's let's so take it away. Do you think Minecraft got a bit of a popularity update from one, the 1.14 update? Yeah, I think it did because. Um, a lot of people enjoy having scaffolding as elevators and many things like that. What is your favorite weapon? My favorite weapon is definitely the bow and arrow. Mine would have to be probably a sword or a bow and arrow, yeah. A diamond sword is the best. Yeah. I actually I remember when I was younger and I first started playing, I always thought the gold was the second best and then diamond was the first, but actually gold was the worst. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much worse than wood. Um, it's yeah. like the weapon's durability is worse than wood. Yeah, so it's not very the best. Once I had a gold pickaxe for no reason in a Minecraft map, it was like called cobble clicker, I think. And you had to get loads of cobblestone to unlock more islands. And I got like an efficiency five, um, or, no, an efficiency four gold pickaxe. And I ended up never using it because I knew they were really bad. Yeah, that didn't work out very well. No, it did not. Did you get any more islands? Yeah, I'm on. I'm on. I'm pretty sure I'm on the the. The, I just need to get enough cobblestone to unlock the very last island, and then I'm done. Oh, so you're pretty much almost done. Um, do you, what do you like most in the 1.14, actually? Um, I'd have to say the smoker, because it's really easy to get. You only need one furnace and four logs, and it's really easy. It, like, it smelts food way quicker, like... Let's say you're just starting a new survival world and you have a smoker and you're really low on food. You could just cook up, let's say, some of your beef and you, it'll be really quick. Yeah, it's a lot quicker. Yeah. Uh, there's also, I think... Uh, the blast furnace. The blast furnace and there's also a uh, wood cutter, I'm pretty sure. And yeah. it made slabs, didn't it? Yeah, so it just makes it for a cheaper price. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You need three andestite and one iron ingot. Speaking of video games, Alana had a nice talk with Saif earlier this week about how video games are programmed. I don't know much about programming myself, so let's jump into it. Hi everyone, and here with me I have Saif, and we're going to be talking a little bit about Coder Dojo. So Saif, what exactly is Coder Dojo? Coder Dojo is a club where people can make games, websites, and things like that. I also, um, every year you can go to something called Close Projects. That's very interesting. So what do you do in Coder, Coder Dojo Club? In Coder Dojo Club, you learn, you learn about making games and HTML, which is website making. So what do you enjoy doing there? 
What's your favorite part? I enjoy making games and websites, usually. In your own words, um, what is coding? Coding is basically a language talking to the computer, telling it what to do. Well, to do many things. Have you ever presented the coolest project? Uh, yes, I have gone to coolest projects. My zone and I entered our project, Spoon FM. It was a radio station. And how did that go? It, it went very well. Um, we didn't win anything, but it was very fun. Would you recommend Coder Dojo for any other kids? Yes, I would, because it is fun and entertaining for many children who like make game making. Thank you for talking to me, Sai. Um, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Bye. That was very interesting, Sai. And don't worry, we have more of that next week. Anyway, well, my friend Sally came in today to talk about animals with Brooke. Probably the complete opposite of programming, but let's go. So, Sally, how many pets do you have? Well... If I count in total, I have nine pets in total. Seven cats, one dog, and one turtle. Wow, that's a lot. Where do you keep most of your pets? Well, they mostly stay inside, but they are allowed outside except for the turtle because the turtle had to stay in his tank. Okay. Um, when did you get your most recent pet? Well, I think it was three weeks ago when I got my two kittens. Oh, wow. Um, why, did you, why do you like having so many pets? Well, they've always been a uh, part of my life. Oh, cool. Um, do any of your family members work with animals? Well, three of us. My mum, my sister and me. I go when my mum goes. Oh, cool. Um, do you have a favourite pet? Well, my dog and my cat called Digby. Cool. Uh, do you think that you'll work with animals in the future? Yes, I do think I will work in, uh, with the animals later in my life. What do you think you'll be doing with them? Well, normally we clean out uh, the cat's cages. Oh, cool. And um, that's all the questions I have. Thanks. Thank you, Sally and Brooke. Many people are talking about how climate change is affecting animals around the world. So let's see what people can do to change that. I don't know, like not throw stuff into the ditches. Um, use less plastic and don't buy packaged food. Maybe ban diesel cars and just go to for electric cars. Uh, stop eating cows. Well, if the president can't find out, how am I meant to find out? The best way to get rid of climate change is to stop burning fo- uh, burn less fossil fuels and to walk more and go- or cycle more and go in the car less. And, um, just stop using um, plastic. We could um, like not use as much plastic. And just... Yeah, I'm not sure, but definitely not use much plastic. What can we do to stop climate change? Let's see. Um, first of all, we can stop polluting the ocean. We can stop throwing plastic everywhere and recycle more. Also, just... Uh, I can't say it all in one go. Google it. Um, if, if, if people don't start picking up their litter and putting it in the actual bin, um, I would be I would be the president and st- and start um, finding everyone who litters three thousand euro. On the topic of climate change, me and Owen, a self-taught climate change expert, had a nice talk on the subject earlier this week. Roll the tape. So a lot of people talk about climate change, but what is it really? Well, it's when like you know, no, it's it's when like people, it's when you know. It's carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere, and then, and then it goes like right at the top, and then, and then it keeps in all the heat in the at- in the on the earth, and then that heats up the like temperature. So, is this uh, global warming affecting the planet? Yes, it is really. Like there, there is like people people are using car like cars, and that uses diesel, and that like burns the diesel to like move around. And also, pe- in some countries like China, they burn their garbage. Really? Well, yeah, they they used to burn like a ton, like a lot of it, like before. But then they stop, you know, because they realize they're actually making it worse. So, does um, 
does the global warming like affect other pla places in the world? Does it make um, other countries warmer and others colder? Mm, no, it makes it makes every it makes the planet warmer, and that's like you know, and and that's including the North and the South Pole. Like in in the North, like almost like all like the ice is uh, is melting, you know, and the ice is melting. And if we didn't, we probably didn't know this, but like like black like black absorbs heat and white like reflects it so that's why you see like that's maybe that's why snow is white and the ocean and the ocean there is black and then you know it gets hotter and then like when the ice melts it gets faster and faster how come people are always blamed for this mm, well like because no like textile factories and you know and like and like you know all the other like fa type of factories like say no that's a completely different thing I think wait so people I think like diesel cars diesel cars and car garbage burning and I think as well uh, yeah yeah and that's like pretty much what it is and you know so what can people do in like normal everyday people to do to change uh, uh, global warming. Or like to stop it. Mm, well, well, people could buy like new electric cars, and people could use less diesel. People could also use less plastic, or that might go into like it might go into like an incinerator and then burns it. And why is it such a threat to like? Um, is it a threat to like animals and um, the seas? Yes, I think I think I've heard like the in Australia the coral reef there like it's it's dying because I think the temperatures are getting like hotter. Yeah, the temperatures are getting hotter in Australia and in, in the ocean and the coral the coral is dying. So thanks, Owen, for coming. Uh, I think that's all we have time for. So thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. There's always a worry about how climate change can affect the food industry. Sally, a small chat's very own food enthusiast, went around the other day asking, what is your favorite food and why? And after that, we have Sally again talking about more food. Yay! Pizza? I'd say like chicken with a few seasonings on it. My favorite food is chocolate and pizza and chips and fish. My favorite food would be pizza, pasta, and salt and vinegar crisps. I really enjoy salmon and brown bread. I really enjoy food that has uh, both ve f f fruit and vegetables in them and some meat. So if you had to choose a meal to have right now, what meal would that be? That's a hard question, really. Uh, like my dad said, it's all about the mood. What's your favorite takeaway? I really don't like takeaways. Do you, is it easy for you? Do you ever cook food? Occasionally, yes. Yeah, I can't cook food, but I can bake. Uh, my mum told me how to cook omelette. Then I'm not sure if it counts as cooking, but the first thing I ever learned to cook was pancakes. And then I um, recently learned how to make a shepherd's pie and boil potatoes. The first thing I'm able to cook was probably pot noodles. Is it easy to flip the pancakes? No, I don't flip can pancakes. I just uh, flip them over with a spatula. Or I can flip the pancakes with a spatula. That's all I can do. How, what, was, what, is the, what would you normally use as the ingredients for the pancakes? We use non sulfur raisin green and we put an egg in and the milk. You know. I use normal flour, eggs, and milk. Sometimes I add in sugar, but that only, that's only for my brother because he loves them sweet. What's your favorite topping for the pancakes? I, I really enjoy lemons and sugar. I like Nutella, <coughs> just because I like chocolate. That may be a bit hungry, um, but before I eat something, we'll go on to the next item. Hello everybody, it's Hannah Hurley, and today I'm joined with Brooke O'Shea. Hi. Hi. Um, we're going to be talking about why you started sewing, okay? okay? Yep. So I just have a few questions I'm going to be asking you, and hopefully we we'll get some answers. Okay. Um, so tell me how you started sewing. Um, I started watching Project Runway, and I thought it was really cool the way they, the way they could do whatever they wanted. 
and there was no rules and everything was different. Okay, and why did you want to start sewing? Um, I just liked that there was no rules and you could do whatever you wanted, you could do whatever colours. You could style. mix and match and yeah. everything was different. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your favourite thing about sewing? Um, I like that there's no rules and everything's different and there's no particular age yeah. to yeah, start at no and it's great when you like start young because then you'll have it going on like yeah I started yeah. liking it like I had an interest in it when I was around nine and then but I only started sewing like a while ago yeah and would you think you might want to start your own like business um I don't know because the way I sew it changes quite like Frequently, because I used to do dolls' clothes, and now I do pillowcases and stuff like that. So, um, and uh, where do you kind of get your ideas and like materials? Um, I look at Pinterest and Instagram, and kind of use like the colors or the styles that they'd use and make it my own. And what do you do to start a plan? Um, I measure or I look for the inspiration and see what colours to do and what style or what object I'm going to do. Okay, thank you so much for talking to us today and hopefully I'll get to talk to you again sometime. Thanks for having me. Okay, bye. Bye. Talking about sewing, let's move on to a similar topic. Our next topic is with Faye and Ashling talking about fake designs versus real defines. Take it away. Good afternoon, you're listening to Small Chat. Today I'll be discussing fake versus real designer with the, o- with the owner of AF and Co Design. Hi, Ashling. Hello. Ashling, you're the owner of AF and Co Design. Yes. Do you agree with fake designer? No, I don't agree. Why is that? Um, because if you buy a bag for like a thousand euro and then if you go and there's someone selling it for a lot cheaper, like 20 euro, then you're going to buy the one that's 20 euro and then the shop. How do, yeah, I agree. How does this affect your business? Well, because people aren't going to pay like loads of money if you can just get it for really cheap. Yeah, but then there's also another side to it, because some of the sellers are trying to earn money to put food and water on their family's table. Yeah, but there's loads of other jobs that are, um, that are not illegal and that you can still do. Yeah, so clearly, Ashing, you're a- against fake designer. Yeah, although if I bought, if I didn't own the business, I probably would buy the fake stuff. Thank you so much for being here, Ashling. Please text into five one one three zero five on what you think about fake sellers. That's all for now. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Great guys, that was really interesting. But today, Faye did a vox pop on what you think on your thoughts on fashion. I don't know. No idea. I think fashion is really cool because every design is unique and it's different every time. I think it's really fun to express yourself with like clothing or anything. Fashion. Um, nothing much. It's so bad. I'm not, I'm not sure if I have an opinion or not, honestly. I think fashion is cool, but personally I enjoy wearing things that are comfortable and also look good. But I do not like skinny jeans. They're the worst thing in the world. Well, I think fashion could be whatever you want it to be. It could be your own style and you don't have to follow the trends that are online and whatnot. I love fashion, but I'm probably bad at it. Our next item, um, of the, and our last item of the day, is with Hannah and Brooke and our discussion on um, good and bad outfits. Tell me what I'm looking at here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we kind of chose three go- oh, good so, yeah, outfits and our three favorites. bad outfits. Yeah. Of, um, well, not particularly bad, but bad in our opinion. Yeah. From Met Gala 2019. So. so which one is the good and which one is the bad? Um, <laughs> the one, this one, the one where Lady Gaga is the good one. Okay, so um, will I describe them? Yeah, we can both describe them. Yeah, okay, we'll each take a turn describing them. Oh, we'll start with the bad ones. So the first bad one is this kind of purple tux with a weird rug over the shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah that's what that's like. And it's by Hamish Bowles. Yeah. yeah. That's it the, was designed by, uh, I don't know how to, <laughs> do you know how to pronounce that? Um, the very bottom one. Uh, this one? Yeah. Um, Marison Margiela Artistinella. <laughs> That's the closest I'll ever get to it, all right? 
Um, yeah, you, it was, it's very colorful, yeah. but it just the frills. The frills around the edges just don't it work. Just, just it does have a lot of detail in it, which like you can give credit for, but I just don't like it. Imagine just walking out of like the dressing room with a rug yeah. over your shoulders and just like, hey everybody, don't I look stylish? <laughs> yeah. um, the next one is uh, Katy Perry. She is yeah. chandelier. She's a sh- I, I like I like how extra it is. Yeah. It like You know who it reminds me of? Who? You know the candle from Beauty and the Beast? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like there's a lot there's also a lot of detail in this one, but just the chandelier, like it's just um, the doesn't shoes work. aren't great either. They're oh yeah, I didn't notice. <laughs> it takes me back to a long time ago. <laughs> and that was designed by who is it? Jeremy Scott for Machina. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yep. Uh, yeah. So you can do the next one. And um, Emily Ratajkowski. <laughs> um, it's there's still a lot of detail in that one as well, but it, it's very sheer. And yeah. Revealing. Yeah, it's very. Revealing. And it looks like she has bird wings on her ears. She kind of looks like Thor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, just, it's kind of like lace, but it's not. Yeah, and, and it has the sparkly sequins, and it's just, it's just not to my She looks taste. very cold. She could, yeah. she could share the rug with Hamish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's long, but very the top. Long. It has like a train. It has a train, yeah, but the top part just isn't, just didn't work. Yeah. Will we move on to the good designs? Yeah. Sure. All right, well, um, well I'll describe the first three, since these will count as one. And yeah. So the, there's one that it looks like a mermaid cut, and the second one, yeah. it looks like a cocktail dress, and the last one looks like another sort of a um, mermaid dress. And the first one's yeah. purple, the second one is... It's like a nude. Yeah, a nude yeah. color. And the last one is bright neon orange, my yep. favorite color. <laughs> it goes with everything. Um, yeah, um, yeah. The first one's cool, but it's like you can't really notice it, but there's, it's full of like sequins or diamonds. And yeah, like, I really like the first one. Yeah. yeah. And the, like the throw, it's all like purple. Yeah, and it goes from like silver to kind of sheer into the feather kind of stuff. It's really cool. And yeah. It's um, Kylie Jenner, by the way. Yeah. And it matches her hair. Yeah. <laughs> and her makeup is on fleek, like always. Yeah. And um, that was designed by Versace. Versace. Very expensive. <laughs> and Kim, you can do Kim. Um, it's it's a tight dress, and it's about, is it above her knees? Just above her knees. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's t-shirt kind of dress, like the t-shirt sleeve. Yeah, it, it's very, very tight. Yeah, will very tight. Will we go on to the next design? Okay. Yeah. Oh, this one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. And um, this is the candle. Do you want to do it? Yeah, she has a really cool dress. It reminds me of, like the dresses that you see in a festival down in Rio. Yeah. Yeah, it does with the feathers at the back. Yeah. The well, bright orange. Will you describe um Liam Hemsworth? Yeah. Outfit? It's a black suit with black shoes. It's all black, really. Yeah, and it was designed by. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce these. Vacalero. Yeah, Vacalero. Okay, well, we'll go on to the last one. It is Lady Gaga in bright pink. Bright pink, yeah. It has the four layers, and yeah. And And she takes the bow off her head. She's a big, huge bow in the first dress. And it was like a poofy, big So it's like a layered dress? You take off one dress, and there's a dress underneath, take off another dress, and there's a dress underneath, then you wear the last dress. Yeah. Um, So it was like a bright pink, poofy dress with a It's huge. It looks like um, like the fairy godmother from Cinderella. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Except pink. pink. (laughs) And that was designed by Brandon Maxwell. Yeah. And the second one is a black dress. It's like a sleeveless dress. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's just a really big poofy one again. And the third dress is like a... Sweetheart necklace. dress. Yeah. It's bright pink again. And then the last one is... She's not wearing a dress. No. <laughs> <laughs> and her high heels are... Yeah, huge. her shoes are cool. Oh, I did not see the high heels. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming on, on and talking to us about um, good and bad designs. Thank um, you. 
I'm really glad for you to come. And uh, thank you all for joining us today on Small Chats from Gory Community School. This is a goodbye from Unifei signing off. Have a good day.